Hi guys, Sarah here from Crystal Cove Conservancy. Um, and I just wanted to give you a quick crash course in how you might approach analyzing the fish data from our marine science cruises. Um, so first, you've probably already opened up the data set. Um, if you downloaded this as an Excel file, you may want to upload it to Google Sheets and use that to open it. If you've managed to access it through Google Sheets, you're probably going to want to make your own copy. So you go to File, Make a Copy. Um, you can click here on the folder and decide where you want to save it. And that way you just have your own set of data to manipulate. Um, so if you've taken a look through this, you probably noticed it's pretty extensive. It's data all the way from January 2016 through May and June 2019. So it's really three and a half years. Um, the way that it's set up, so here on the left-hand side, this is our date column. So this is the date of those different cruises. Um, these six columns here, these are the six target fish species that we're really looking for. Um, and then the zeros and ones that you see all throughout this, this means presence or absence. So a one, for instance, means that on this trip, a blacksmith fish was present. We saw at least one of them. Um, a zero means that that fish species wasn't present. And then over here on the right-hand side, we've tallied up the total number of target species present for each cruise. Um, so your task is really figuring out how we can use this data to look for trends. We're interested in knowing whether there has been an increase in the number of fish species seen over the past three and a half years um, that the data set covers. Or we're also curious to know if there is if there are any seasonal trends that you might notice. So are there more fish seen at different times of year, for instance? Um, to do this, you're going to have to figure out how to organize this data set. Um, the way it's set up now, if you were to just graph it the way it's organized with all of these different data points, it's going to be a mess. And I think it's going to be really hard for you to make sense of it. Um, so you might think about coming up with a monthly average or a seasonal average, you know, thinking about like spring, fall, summer, winter or even an annual average of the number of target species seen, and then see if you can find any trends in that. Um, to kind of demonstrate how you might approach this, I wanted to show you with our plankton data. So on those same marine science cruises, um, we also collect data on the presence or absence of plankton. So we have many different target species there, but we do the same thing where we record like a one or a zero for presence absence. Um, so over here on the right-hand side, I tallied up the total number of target species we saw on each trip. Um, this is a smaller data set. I just pulled the data from 20, October 2018 through summer 2019. Um, and then I came up with the averages by month. So this is the average number of plankton species observed every month. Um, and what I can do now, now that it's organized, is I can graph it. So I've highlighted the data that I want to work with. I go to Insert, Chart, and it pops up a chart for me. So I can see if there are any trends in this data. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do once you've created your graph is decide what type of graph you want to use. Um, Google Sheets has suggested a line graph for me to start with, but I might also choose a bar graph. Um, or with a data set like this, where we kind of have these disparate points all over the place, I might even choose a scatter plot, where it shows me exactly where my data points are. So the next question is, is there a trend? Is there some sort of correlation, either positive or negative, in how this data is shifting? Um, so I can use Google Sheets to look for a trend line. So I'll go over here where it says Customize and click on that, and then go to Series and scroll down. It has options for things I can add. I'm going to click on Trend Line. And so what this is doing is it's showing me sort of the line of best fit. Like, is there a trend to this data, and what does that trend look like? Um, so this is really helpful because now I can see it looks like the, the number of plankton species observed has been increasing over this time period. Um, there's some other numbers I can get from Google Sheets to help me describe this line. Um, so for instance, I might want to know the slope of this line, like how quickly is it increasing or dis decreasing. To get that from Google Sheets, um, I can go over here where it says Label and click on it and then say Use Equation. And so now it's given me the slope of that line. So it's 0.0167x is the slope. Um, it can also give me the R squared. And the R squared talks about how far the data points are from this line of best fit. Are they really tightly correlated, meaning are they mostly on this line? Or are they really scattered, meaning they're really far away from this line? Um, in some sciences and businesses, you really want a tight correlation. So you want a high R squared number that's close to 1. Um, because that shows that like the line you're modeling, you're, the line that you're using as a model fits the data really well. Um, other times it doesn't matter. For our case, 
it doesn't really matter if it's a high or low R squared value. Um, we're just interested in knowing what that is. Um, so to add that, I can come over here where it says show R squared and click on that. And then up here, it tells me that my R squared value is 0.674. So it's relatively tightly correlated with that line. This data seems to match this line pretty well. Um, so then I could use this, this graph, as evidence to talk about how the plankton number of plankton species were trending over time. That gradually during this time period seems like they were increasing. Um, I can talk about how quickly they were increasing using my trend line. Um, and I might even start thinking about why they were increasing. Why would I have seen an increase over this time period? Um, so yeah, so that just to kind of give you guys a few ideas of how you might work with this really rough raw data. Um, we're really excited to see what you find. I hope that you will share your findings back with us so that we can share them with Crystal Cove State Park. Um, and if you guys do have any questions, please let us know too. Um, other than that, good luck. Hope you have fun working with this. And again, excited to see what you guys end up coming up with.